Avengers Endgame was a cinematic event 10 years in the making, and bookended a lot of the stories that fans of the MCU have poured so much love and adoration into. Now that we're soon to be entering a new phase of the cinematic universe, one of the biggest questions on the minds of many is who exactly will the Avengers be facing off against in the next big theatrical saga? So today get ready to jump to hypothetical land with us and debate over who that character might be with our list of the top 10 characters who might become the next Avengers villain. And heads up friends, there are some major spoilers for both Avengers Endgame and Captain Marvel on this list. You've been warned, but if you're watching this video, you should probably go watch those movies too. Why haven't you? Go, go. And at number 10, The Mandarin. The Mandarin may have appeared in Iron Man 3 in an adaptation that many had mixed feelings over. But anyone who's a hardcore MCU fan will know that Ben Kingsley's Trevor Slattery wasn't the only one who claimed to be the Mandarin. The comics that tied into the MCU actually retconned this with the one shot, All Hail the King, in which Trevor Slattery's fate was left unknown as he made his way to meet the real Mandarin who ran the Ten Rings. Since there hasn't been any sort of news or updates concerning the character, but the chances of the Mandarin actually returning to the MCU seem pretty bleak. He was primarily a foe of Iron Man's and now that Tony Stark is gone, it doesn't seem likely that the Mandarin will fit as seamlessly into the universe's narratives. Moving on to number 9, Red Skull. The Russo brothers have actually confirmed that Red Skull, who was played by Ross Marquand in Infinity War and Endgame, has been released of his imprisonment and task on Vormir now that the Soul Stone no longer resides there. This opens up the possibility that the character could return to the MCU, but perhaps Red Skull's impact would be significantly less compelling now that Steve Rogers is retired and out of the picture. Regardless, he's a character who we wouldn't be surprised to see making a cameo somewhere down the line. Or maybe that's wishful thinking. Really, all we wanted to see was Cap return the Soul Stone to Warmere and come face to face with his ex foe. It could have been amazing. And at number 8, Doctor Doom. There's no doubt that Doctor Doom will make one hell of a fantastic addition to the MCU. No pun intended there. Victor Von Doom is one of the most complex and dynamic antagonists the Marvel comics have ever seen, first appearing in 1962 in the Fantastic Four issue 5. He's one of a handful of characters on this list that will inevitably find their way into the MCU, but how exactly is a total mystery. Now that Marvel Studios and Disney have acquired the rights for the character back from Fox, it seems likely that Victor would make his on screen debut alongside the Fantastic Four, something that many fans have theorized won't happen until phase 5. Doom could arguably hold his own as the next saga's big bat. He's an absolute genius, and has proven to be one of the most persistent villains in the comics to date. Moving on to number 7, The Skrulls. Ever since the trailer for Captain Marvel's solo film dropped, fans have been speculating that Secret Invasion will be the next story event to be adapted into the MCU. The Skrulls were introduced into the cinematic universe in that film, which was set in the 90s, and ended with them leaving Earth to start a better life. The conclusion of Captain Marvel's film painted The Skrulls as a peaceful race just trying to survive from the Kree's genocidal goals. And it seems that perhaps Secret Invasion may be a story left untouched for now because of it. On the flip side of that though, fans did notice a neat little easter egg at the end of Avengers Endgame, when Peter returned to school. Ben Mendelsohn, who plays Skrull character Talos in Captain Marvel, was visible in the background, working as what appeared to be a school administrator, welcoming students back after the snap was reversed. So could the Skrulls have returned to Earth since the 90s? And are they back with more nefarious intentions? Up next at 6, the Kree. Speaking of the Skrulls, the Kree were set up as way more of an antagonistic force in the MCU. They've always been mixed up with some sort of trouble in all of their cinematic appearances so far, from Ronan threatening mass genocide to Jude Law's young rog and the supreme intelligence who manipulate Carol Danvers for years, and also threaten genocide. Despite Carol kicking their butts and helping the Skrulls escape the Kree's very genocidal goal of exterminating the race once and for all, the supreme intelligence is still out there in the galaxy and surely won't be too pleased that Captain Marvel is out there too, soaring around, actively protecting the Skrulls and others that they deem as a threat. So who's to say they won't target humans next? And at number 5, Norman Osborn. Norman Osborn is a character that we are all waiting to see make a debut in the MCU. Osborn, aka the Green Goblin, arguably Spider Man's main arch nemesis, has been left on the bench so far. And while we all believe that it's inevitable he'll appear on the big screen fighting the Web Slinger one day, there have been fan theories floating around since Endgame that suggest he might arrive sooner rather than later. One popular theory suspects that Osborn will actually be introduced via the Secret Invasion story arc, adapting his Green Goblin persona as a genetically mutated scroll rather than simply thanks to the goblin formula. Others think that thanks to the five year time jump, we'll be seeing Peter Parker mingling with new students the likes of Gwen Stacy and Harry Osborn in upcoming films, which will give way to the villain's introduction. With Spider-Man very much being set up to fill Iron Man's shoes in the Avengers, 
and potentially keep everyone's interest still invested in the team now that the Infinity Saga has ended, an appearance from Norman Osborn as an earthly big bad could really make an impact. Considering that Spider-Man Far From Home is the final installment in Phase 3 of the MCU, there could be a foundation set in place for Osborn to enter into the cinematic universe sooner than expected. And at 4, Adam Warlock. In the post credit scene of the Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, we got to see a glimpse of a character who is yet to officially debut in the MCU. We're talking Adam Warlock. At the beginning of the film, the Guardians pull a fast one on the Sovereign, a highly advanced genetically engineered race. Their leader Aisha creates a new kind of Sovereign, who is brewing in a cocoon that she decides to name Adam, leading fans to believe that this was in fact Adam Warlock, the cosmic hero who played a very large role in the Infinity Gauntlet comics from 1991. Despite not appearing in the Infinity Saga in the MCU, many have speculated that the third Guardians film will feature the hero in some capacity, and that he may initially play the role of a villain. In addition to that, Warlock has an alter ego the name of Magus, a sinister version of himself who initially appeared in the comics from the future. With the amount of power Warlock is capable of, and the fact that he was left out of the Infinity Saga, this has led some people to theorize that the character may end up being a threat of the next iteration of Avengers, rather than fighting on the side of good from the get go. And at number 3, The Beyonder. The Infinity Saga has left some pretty big shoes to fill. Thanos size shoes. And many fans of the cinematic universe believe that the only way to top that or keep up the momentum is for the next wave of Avengers to face off against a baddie who is at least as powerful as the Mad Titan was. The Beyonder, the villain at the center of the Secret Wars story event, definitely fits that bill. First appearing in Secret Wars issue 1 in 1984, the Beyonder debuted as an unseen omnipotent being who kidnapped the heroes and the villains of the Marvel Universe and plopped them onto another planet called Battleworld for them to duke it out in a massive competition for his entertainment. He claims to possess a power a million times greater than the entire multiverse combined, and has proven capable of destroying and recreating abstract entities the likes of death. He's destroyed galaxies on a whim before too. He would return in the Secret Wars sequel in 1985 with a more sinister goal, to destroy the Marvel multiverse, and appeared in a humanoid form, taking on a human form to better understand the race. So all in all, very powerful character. But whether or not the MCU would want to bring the Beyonder into the fray is a little debate Without the Fantastic Four having been introduced or their main foe Doctor Doom, an adaptation of Secret Wars might be a tad lacking, because they're pretty involved. So it seems more likely that the MCU might introduce another extremely powerful threat before busting out the Beyonder in Phase 4 or 5. Speaking of characters of cosmic proportions, let's move on to our number 2, Galactus. Perhaps the most popular theory as to who the next Avengers villain will be is the devourer of worlds himself, Galactus. Galactus is a cosmic entity who first appeared in Fantastic Four issue 48. Initially a mortal man named Galen of Ta, he was alive in a universe that existed prior to the Big Bang, a cosmic event that ended up destroying his universe and created the one we know now. Galen was merged with the sentience of the universe during the destruction, giving him the power cosmic, which required him to devour entire planets in order to stay alive. It's an insatiable hunger, and one he travels around throughout the universe trying to fill, with his herald, the Silver Surfer, scoping out potential planets for him to consume. Despite often committing mass genocide, the character is beyond ethics, being a force of nature that disregards any sense of morality, with his existence necessary in maintaining the balance of the universe. Universal balance was what motivated Thanos to do what he did in the Infinity Saga. So there's potential there with Galactus to bridge together that and the next saga thematically if Marvel Studios wanted to go down that route. And finally, in at number 1, Kang the Conqueror. While Galactus seems like the kind of character who would best fit the role of the next major Avengers antagonist, Kang the Conqueror is someone who many believe may make an appearance in the next Avengers film, potentially filling in as a Loki or Ultron level kind of threat. Or maybe more, who knows. Kang is from the 31st century, he's a time traveler and Several versions of him have appeared over the years in the comics. He first appeared in Fantastic Four issue 19 in 1963, but took on a much bigger role and the name of Kang in 1964 in the Avengers issue 8 as a foe of the superhero team. On their first encounter, he kidnaps all of the Avengers except for the Wasp and Rick Jones, and informs the world that they have 24 hours to surrender to him. After Jones double crosses the villain and frees the Avengers, Kang releases radiation only those from his future world are immune to, but Thor uses Molnir to absorb the radiation and fires it back at Kang. Now, he's very much a character whose story relies on the multiverse and multiple timelines, and some fans believe that the introduction to the multiverse in the MCU and Avengers Endgame is setting the stage for a villain who has a mastery of maneuvering through said multiverse. And that villain is definitely Kang. Alright friends, there we have it. Time to take bets. Who do you think will be the next big bad in the Marvel Cinematic Universe? Give us a shout in those comments below and let us know all of your thoughts and feels. If you dug this video, hey, why not hit that like button? 
And be sure to subscribe to Top 10 Nerd for lists just like this one. We've even got a playlist that's flashing on your screen right now that you should definitely give a click. In the meantime, thanks for watching, friends. I'll catch you all in the next video.